Welcome back. I'm Keegan Cooper. High school football playoffs continue today in the UP. We start with a Division 7 semifinal. The Menominee Maroons hosting the Benzie Central Huskies today down in Menominee. It's the Maroons who are on the board first, capping off their first drive. Landon Bardowski powers into the end zone, and the Maroons have a 6-0 lead. Huskies with the ball now, but trouble afoot as Maroons Bardowski sheds a lineman and sacks Dan Wallington. Ball comes loose, and Eli Beal recovers the fumble. It's Maroons football. Maroons again here. Trevor Turkoff finds Beal in the end zone. Touchdown, Maroons 12-0. Two-point conversion, no good. Huskies time for their second drive, and this time again, a pitch to the outside. It's fumbled again. Menominee recovers. It's Maroons football just like that. The ensuing drive coming up for Menominee. Turkoff back to Bardowski. He cuts inside, and I'll see you later. Touchdown, Maroons. It's 18-0. Two-point, no good. The Maroons struggled on the two-point conversions today, but they still had the lead. Third drive for the Huskies, and I cannot kid. Good run to begin, but the ball comes loose again. Another fumble. It's recovered by Menominee for the third time. Three fumble recoveries for them on the day. Maroons again, Bardowski again, and you guessed it, touchdown again, 26-0. I guess Menominee heard about the Iron Mountain statement win and wanted to make a statement of their own. They win big time, 50-14 to over Benzie Central. I see you, Maroons, I see you. So next for the Maroons, a matchup with the Raiders in the Division 7 District 1 final. They will take on Charlevoix. Also in playoff football, Tri-County visited Kingsford today. The Fliver Marching Band in attendance. Kingsford scores first here with a 46-yard touchdown run from none other than Eli Rouse. Taking it all the way to the house, Tri-County would come back and answer here. Coming up with a 13-yard reception by Jaden Button to make the score 7-6. But the Friday night Flivers still had the lead. Now the Flivers would extend that lead with a 19-yard run by None other than Rouse again. Here he comes, and Kingsford would take a 14-6 lead after this touchdown run. Rouse would score again to make it a two-possession game, and the Vikings would score twice before half, including a touchdown run punched in by Cade Hallman. But the Flivers would race away with the game in the second half, following a nine-yard touchdown by Noah Johnson on their way to a 49-28 win. And next for the Flivers, a matchup with the Falcons, Ogma Heights. That's Division 5, District 1 final. It should be exciting. Moving to eight-player football, the Lakeland and Hubble Lakes taking on the Forest Park Trojans. A look at both teams before action got underway. Second down for the Lakes on their own 10. Here comes Sam Robert, Roberts, excuse me, charging through the line, down the field, scoring a 90-yard touchdown, the first of the game. And the Lakeland and Hubble Lakes are on the board. Trojans come back with the ball now, and it's a quarterback fumble. Ball gets loose, scoops it up, trying to recover. Make a pass to Kevin Giuliani, but here comes the Lakes. Danny Marcotte leaping, managing to snag the ball away. Interception, Lakes take possession with about six and a half minutes left in the quarter. A few minutes later, that would be the Lakes' second touchdown here. Roberts again, and through the defenders, dashing 21 yards to the end zone. Trojans made a tough push in the final minutes of the quarter, but the Lakes recovered another fumble and would end Forest Park's season with a 27-6 victory. And moving on, three-time defending state champion, North Central Jets on the road today in Lower Michigan, taking on the undefeated Posen Vikings. First quarter, Posen knocking on the door here for senior quarterback Jack Rome sweeps to the near sideline. He put down by the linebacker Lane Gorzinski. Jets take over on downs. The Jets... Take over on the four-yard line, grind out a 96-yard drive here. Jake Gorzinski takes it the final yard. It's 12-0 North Central. Gorzinski and the Jets just getting started. And after the Vikings score on a trick play, Jets back in business here. Gorzinski dumps it off to freshman Caden Malone. He takes it 14 yards for the touchdown. North Central leads 18-8. The Jets keep pulling away in the second quarter. Here's Jake Gorzinski again. This time goes 21 yards for the score. Gorzinski finished with 187 yards, 23 carries, and three touchdowns. Jets lead 26-8. And a little fun for North Central. Here's Gorzinski to senior Evan Hancheck for a touchdown again. Jets win it big 54-20. Now elsewhere in high school football playoffs, Ishpeming advanced after a win on the road, 20-6 over East Jordan. And North Central again gets that win 54-20. Now for both teams, they face teams they saw in the regular season. Ishpeming will take on Iron Mountain, a UP battle, Division 8, District 1 final. The Jets face Lakeland and Hubble, who beat them in the regular season 28-25 back on September 22nd. Now let's move on to some CCHA action from earlier. Northern Michigan hosting Ferris State 
at the Berry for the second straight night. Now still no score, 13 and a half minutes into the first, but Picorni with a shot deflected and Antonio Venuto is there to clean it up, putting Ferris up one to nothing. Now the Bulldogs would take that lead into the second period. Six minutes in, Josh Zinger goes for the Wrestler from way downtown. Wildcats even it at one apiece. Later in the second period, it's Kevin Marks and Norn corrals the puck along the board, shoots out of nowhere here, and NMU takes their first lead of the night two to one. Heck of a way for Marks Norn to score his first career goal. Now the Cats would take that lead into the third and add to it. Coming up here, it's Artem Schlame goes top left, putting them up by two. They go on to win this one four to one. When you're on a little bit of a skid, you, you kind of need to tough one out. You know, you just got to find a way and, and, and tough it out a little bit. And because uh, the hockey guys make you do that, they're not going to give it to you. So, you know, I, we fell behind early. Um, you know, I, I thought the power play goal was important, but I thought Kevin's goal to make it two to one, it, it got the crowd in it. You know, it was the first time that we had played well enough to get basically another sold out rink behind us. Well, earlier in the day, NMU football also hosting Wayne State at the Dome. We go to the action now here from the Wildcats. The Wildcats would take a 5-10 lead, but first, it's a live a look at Frankenstein and the Northern Michigan Marching Band. Now, they took that 10-5 lead into halftime, but just three minutes into the third quarter, Wayne State quarterback Justin Cox hits Deion Brown down the sideline. A great catch, and the Warriors now lead 12-10. Offense hard to come by for the Cats in the second half. Next NMU series here, Aiden Horde looking for Franco Williams, but that ball pops up and it's intercepted by Hayden Loa. Two plays later, Cox finds Nathaniel Eberly Rodriguez streaking down the sideline. No one able to catch him. Wayne State opens up a nine-point lead early in the fourth quarter. Coming up, Kendall Williams would take the handoff, breaks through for another 20-yard Wayne State touchdown. The Warriors blow this one wide open, scoring 39 unanswered before the Wildcats punch in a garbage time touchdown. 41-17, your final. Northern Michigan now 0-9 on the season. Elsewhere in Wildcat Athletics today, the NMU volleyball team drops a match against Davenport on the road, three sets to one. The NMU men's soccer team also in action today for GLIAC tournament play, also up against Davenport on the road. A tough one as they fall 3-0, ending their season, finishing 2-9-4 overall and in Michigan Tech athletics the football team falls on the road against Grand Valley State 44 to 13 and the women's volleyball team also drops a match against Grand Valley State on the road that final on that one three sets to one